Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute the correlation and covariance for uh, two different stock returns. So let's uh, say we have one company, Tesla Motors, and another company, Exxon Mobil Corporation. So uh, the reason I chose these two companies is because you would expect that their stocks would uh, give returns in uh, negative correlation. That means if Exxon does well, maybe Tesla won't do well. And if Tesla does well, maybe Exxon won't do well. So I'm curious to see if that is reflected in the stock prices for the last one year. So what I do is I go to Yahoo Finance and I, uh, if you just go to uh, TSLA, just enter TSLA in this box here and you'll be brought to the Tesla Motors web page. And if you go to historical prices, you can actually select the prices for the last one year. I'm choosing January 1st, 2014 through January 1st, 2015. And I'm choosing monthly returns. And if you click get prices, you'll get um, the monthly returns data, which you can download to a spreadsheet. And you can do the same thing with uh, Exxon as well. Go to historical prices, choose the dates, choose monthly and get prices and you'll get the prices. Download it. Here is the Exxon uh, data downloaded into a, a comma separated value or CSV file. Here is the Tesla data downloaded to a CSV file. And you can copy paste both these uh, data sets into a common file uh, for analysis. Now what we'll do is we'll use the adjusted close, which is the closing price of the stock, Exxon stock in this case, after accounting for any dividends and uh, stock splits and so on. And likewise for Tesla as well, we'll use the adjusted close. So what I'll do is I'll first uh, hide all these other columns so that we can have some more space. The first thing I want to compute is the returns. And the way I compute the return is, if you look at this, this is in reverse chronological order. So December 1st, followed by November 3rd, and then October 1st. So what I can do is I can take this stock price divided by the previous stock price, minus one, and that will give me the return over the previous month. I can convert this to a percentage if I want and increase the number of decimal places to two. So it shows up as a nice percentage. I'm just going to increase the uh, screen area here by minimizing the ribbon. And now if you drag this down all the way here, you'll get the returns. I, you can drag it even further down to this column here, but then because there is no return available here, it's going to just show a zero. I'm going to delete this for now. And likewise, do the same thing here, this divided by this minus one. And then you can convert that into percentage increase the decimal places and double click here and delete the last item. So now that you have the returns, the first thing I want to calculate is the average returns. The average returns are the average of all these returns here. And likewise, the average of all these returns. So on average, um, Exxon has returned 0.34% uh, on a monthly basis last year. The monthly average return for Exxon is 0.34% and the monthly average return for Tesla is 2.8%. The next thing I want to compute is the variance of these returns. The variance is computed by the formula PARP within parenthesis, all these values. And likewise here, all these values here. So uh, the variance is basically a measure of the spread of the returns, how widely spread the returns are. Another way to compute variance is uh, to actually find out the uh, spread and find out the square root of the spread. So uh, you can just do diff hyphen SQD so to stand for different squared. So what you can do is you can take the return here and press F2 here. I'm just going to put it in parenthesis minus um, the average return and I'm going to put this in F4 so that there's that value is always there um, and then you can do a square of that and you can do that for all these returns here or you can do an average of these squares so the sum of all of these divided by by 11 and that should give you another way to measure your variance so with that out of the way, the next thing we want to compute is the standard deviation. It's, it's basically the square root of the variance. And you can think of that as um, a way to kind of reduce the variance to um, 
a comparable percentage like your average so here what we're doing is we are squaring it right we're taking this difference between this return and the average return and squaring that now we are adding up all the squares and we are averaging the squares but since there's already a square here we want to find the square root to kind of reduce um, the variance to a more comparable figure and that's what standard deviation is so, so it can be done using st D E V P within parenthesis all these values here another way to compute the standard deviation is just to find the square root of the variance so you'll get the exact same value again let's compute the standard deviation which is nothing but the square root of the variance and here you can actually indicate the standard deviation as a percentage and now it gives you a measure of the extent to which the stock returns um, deviate from their mean from time to time now we are ready to compute the covariance between the stock returns for exxon and tesla the covariance is a measure of the extent to which the stock returns between these two companies vary together so let's compute the covariance between the two stocks take these returns and these returns here so you provide h3 to h13 and p3 to p13 you provide both the ranges complete the parenthesis press enter so that's the covariance between the two now it's also possible to reduce covariance to um, a percentage if you will um, correlation of returns is that percentage the first array is this and the second array is this so there's actually a positive correlation between the returns for Exxon and Tesla and that is 39% so in fact you can take uh, add a percentage sign to correlation 39.53% another way to derive the correlation is by dividing the covariance by each of the um, standard deviations if you do this you'll get the exact same figure and there it is so that's another way to arrive at the correlation so that's it for now i hope you like this thank you for watching